So the next row is the row C and we're gonna sort through the bag. So let's open up the packet and we will have in here, we have the booklet of course, and then in here we have the cornerstone and lattices. I will set this aside. The C1 through C7 bag and the C8 through C13 bag. We are gonna work on the C1 through 7 bag in this video. The 8 through 13 bag will be in the following video. So the first thing I do is I take my booklet and I transcribe which modified blocks there are. And um, there's no four and a half inch blocks in this, so we don't have to worry about that. That's usually the very first thing I do. So now I'm going to get into my book with my booklet. So we have C2 as a modified block and I marked it in my book so that when I get to this part in assembly and in bag sorting, I can go directly to the booklet instead of the book. So I got the C2 and then we have C4, which is here, here. There's C4 is a modified and C9 is the next modified. So that's in the back more, C9 and then C10 and C13, so C10 and C13, I have that in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the page with C1 and open it up. So we're going to open this up, if I can get it open, there we go, and I'm just going to dump out all these pieces. Make sure that I get them all in one location. And as I get these out, I'll make sure that all the little bits are out. So this, the big pieces and the special special shapes I set aside. And so there's a bunch of these kind of things. So right now I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna focus on trying to get these. But as I try to get these, I am gonna try to be, uh, pile these up in the thing. So these are a little too wide and they're not long enough anyway. So I'll put these in a pile of bars and then I've got a pile of squares and diamonds and all that kind of stuff. So let me sort through here and find the pieces for my C1 block. Okay, so I have found the center square and the outer bars and they're obvious. There's none that are really, really close. So you're good there. And then there's four triangles that are clearly the only ones that can be in the center portion here. So as I finish placing these, I have piled up my pieces. I have a large pile of diamonds of various sizes. I have a large pile of squares of various sizes. I have a pile of pieces that have a curve, like I have these kind of things and these kind of things and um, little pie pieces with a curved end. So I have a pile of ones that have part a curve. So this is just how I group them. You can group them however you want, or you can just swipe them to the side and dig every time. I just figured it's easier to sort them into piles as you sort them, because then you can find the next section easier. So now I'm going to label these as all of these pieces. I'm going to label C1 so that in case something comes along, I know exactly which piece is what, and this also tells me which direction it goes. So these are all labeled C1. Now I'm gonna label my focus fabric versus my background, and my background fabric in this picture is the lighter. So the center square, and then the inner ring of rectangles. So the center square, and those are, oh, those are background. So I mark focus fabric, so that would be the triangles around the center square, and the rectangles on the outside only. And if you have a directional fabric, now's the time to indicate which goes which direction. If you wanna radiate from the center, you can make an arrow either way. I don't have directional fabric for this colorway, so I'm not gonna label them, but I label them with an ink pen, with an arrow, and whatever other indications, this is the time to do it. And so now I'm going to take a piece of paper and label it C1 and stick these in a baggie of their own and move on to the next block. Now the next block is C2 and the, the book indicates, whoops, there you go, 
the book indicates that it's a modified block. So I'm going to get my booklet, maybe, here we go, and turn in the booklet to this. And the difference is right here, they've divided this because this shape in an English paper piece is pretty much a nightmare if it's doable at all. So they have separated this into this piece and to this piece. And then we've got um, nine diamonds and two outer diamonds. And I believe that these are bigger or different shape than these, but we're gonna check that out. So I'm gonna put this here and go to my giant pile of diamonds because there's a lot of diamonds in this bag. And there's teeny tiny ones, which are not for this block. So we're gonna set those back aside. So we have this diamond is gonna be all the same size here. And then if we stick this here, you can see that it's different. The points on the edge, on the sides, do not go to the points on the book. So there are two different sizes, but they're very, very close. So we're gonna find all the center ones, and then the other two I'm gonna set aside. What I'm gonna do is as I sort these, I will put these in a pile and stack them on top of each other and make sure that these are all the same piece of paper. And if they're not, then I'll set those two aside and then I'll have the other nine. All right, so I have nine diamonds that are exactly the same size. Okay, and I've counted them all, and they're all in this pile. And then I have two here that do not fit my pile. So let me see if this will show on camera. I'm not sure. So the one in the front is smaller than the one in the back. And so if I put one of the points, so if I match up these points, the rest of the points do not match exactly. So these are the outside points, but because they're so close, you're gonna need to indicate that. So these are the outers, and then we're gonna place the middles. And then I'm gonna go through and find these pieces. All right, and this is where labeling comes in very importantly. This has, see where it says this little hex gun says beware of directional pieces. If you have this piece flipped upside down, there's no way it's going to fit in here. So if you don't label which side is the back and the front, then when you go to put it on fabric, you have the potential of cutting it the wrong direction, and you will need to cut it the other direction. So these pieces are considered right hand, left hand. And so this is why labeling on the back is a, is a big deal. And apparently I keep bouncing my pieces around because I'm not using my little stiletto. So I'm gonna place all my pieces. I've got these to go in the other places as well. And I will lay out all the pieces for this block. So I've got all my pieces for my C2 block on my booklet. And I'm now going to carefully label each one as C2. As I label my pieces, when I get to these two diamonds, I am going to put the word outer on each one of these. I'm trying not to move these because they're on this paper. Um, so that way, when I put them in my baggie, I know which ones are which immediately. So, see, I'm moving all this. <laughs> So much fun. Okay, so C2 outer on both of these. And so that way I can know exactly the difference between those and these. So now we're going to label the focus fabric, which is the dark diamonds on this. So we've got these diamonds through the center here, the ones on the outside, and then the outer ones are also focus fabric. The rest of these are not. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to mark it. I did have a directional fabric for my first colorway, which was intriguing to find out a way to do it, but as long as you do everything consistently, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna bag these up and then I'm gonna move on to the C3 block. 
So now we're on to C3 and I've made a colorway already. And so what I did is I went through here and put an X on which one was focus fabric and which one wasn't because it's easier to see the grid that way. Um, you have a pile, I have a pile of squares and one of them is in the center, which should be kind of obvious. I think that's the only one actually that it can be. Yeah, so that's the center square because it can't be anything else. And then I have a pile of little rectangles, which should be the ones for here. So I've got the rectangles. I should have eight of those. And then I'm going to go through my squares, because I've got a whole bunch of different size squares over here too. So I'm going to go through here and find how many? Four times four is 16 little squares, which should be relatively easy to find. So once I find ones that match, I'll go through and pull the rest of them out and then have my pieces laid out. So I've got my pieces laid out and now I'm going to label each one of these C3. Okay, now we're going to label the focus fabric and it's going to be those little X's that I put underneath. And that was for placement during assembly. So we got the center square and the ones in an X formation outside from those. Do those and do those. And then we have the outer rectangles on all four sides. And then I'll just double check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then one, two, three, four. And the center square. Label your directional fabric if you have any. And I will bag this up and move on to C4. Next we have C4. And because of the glare, you can't see it on this part. We have a modified block, so I'm going to go to my booklet. And what we have in the booklet here is a nine patch in the center. Instead of the, front, the fenced in nine patch that they have here, it makes things a little easier to deal with. Um, and then we've also, they've also split this into two pieces to make it easier to deal with as well. So I'm going to work from here. So there's five, and then my other four, those are all the same thing. And then we're going to take, we're going to find four triangles to go around that, which obviously that's too big. So I will find four triangles that are that size. So there's one. And then I've got these slivers. I've got a pile of slivers over on the side of my book that I should be able to place these with. So I will get my place, my pieces placed. And this again is an example of a left hand, right hand situation. So let's get these placed and then we can label them correctly. So I've got my C4 block laid out and now it's time to label this. So I've got my C4 labeled. Now it's time to label focus fabric and because of the design change, or because of the modification, the design has changed a little bit. So you've got some freedom to move here. These usually stay back, but you, these used to usually stay background and this is focus fabric. So let's do that right now. This is focus fabric. Now, what I did on my first one is I did this. So I did my corner triangles here in um, focus fabric and then I checkerboarded the center with a background and the X position. What you could do is you could put the focus fabric in an X position and make these background. And I think I'm actually gonna do that. Um, have these background and these focus fabric because that just looks like it should be fun. So here's some interpretation here for whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna make this, because I have a black background is why I'm thinking about doing this. So I'm gonna do this as my focus fabric, as the X's. And I'm going to leave this background. So then what that's going to do is I have brights. So let's, for example, say I have a yellow. And so this is going to be black. This will be yellow. So the yellow is going to be in an X position and then here. So the rest of this will be black. So that'll be kind of interesting to see the way that turns out. Um, if, you have folk, if you have a directional fabric, don't forget to label it. And I'm going to move on to my C5 after bagging my C4 pieces. So now we're up to C5, and C5 has got Kirby pieces, so all my pieces are going to be in my Kirby pile. So 
So I'm going to take my curvy pile. Then there may be extras in there, but we're going to start with my curvy pile because all of my pieces are going to be in here and there just might be some extras. So this does not fit. This is for this block. So because it's the next block, I'm going to set this over here by its center. Two, three, and there's another one in here somewhere. Okay, so then we have this guy. And these go over here. And more of these guys right here. More corners. All right, and then you have, again, this is a right hand, left hand situation. So we're going to place these there. And we're going to have all these pie pieces in the center as we go. So I'm going to place all these around here. And then I've got these little other pieces. I've got these little pieces. I'm not sure what to call them. But they go on top of the pie pieces in half of the blocks. So those go here. And then their corresponding piece to finish it off is this bit. So I will sit here and I will lay out all these pieces and then they will be ready to label. One thing I want to note as you're laying out your pieces, if you put your pie piece in here, everything's all hunky-dory. Okay, it's right there on the line. When you go to put this piece in, not so hunky-dory. Make sure that this piece goes to the corner, okay? And that this lines up with the paper. You have this, okay? That's okay. They're all the same. And guess what? This paper is big enough to cover that discrepancy. So it doesn't really matter because the papers match each other and fill the space completely. I just wanted to let you know because there is no other piece in this bag that can be this piece. So I'm going to label these with my C5 indication if I can open my marker. All right. So I've got my C5. And the other thing is, about the right hand, left hand for this, they are all the same. Because if you look at it, these are not flipped the other way. So all of these are actually facing the same direction. All of these are facing the same direction. And all of these bigger ones are, because that's how they have to do with the repetitiveness. So um, let me get working on my labeling. And then I'll be able to mark my focus fabric. So now I can label my focus fabric, and it's in every other kind of situation. So we've got focus fabric, background, focus fabric, background, focus fabric, background, okay? On the top is opposite of what you just did here. So you have focus fabric, because this is background, focus, background, focus fabric, background, background, focus fabric, background. So you get the idea. Otherwise, you lose the effect of the block. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then these are all background pieces up top. So I will bag this up and move on to my C6 block. So now C6 is the next block, and it's really straightforward. We've got one center section that is this guy. And then we have these four guys, little football things that I don't think are going to fit exactly. That's okay. Because, just like, see, like this one, doesn't fit exactly. That's okay, because it's the only one it can be. So we're going to put this there, we're going to put this here, and we're going to put the rest of them around there. But when we put this here, see, let me show you. Let me put this, let's put this in the corner, okay? So it's slightly smaller, and then this fills that, okay? Pretend that it's flat, I swear. And then this will fill in that whole section, so you would never know. So I'm going to place all these so that I can label them. Okay, so now I can label my pieces C6. C6. And then I can label my focus fabric and my background, which is really easy because the only background in here is the little footballs. So the rest of it is focus fabric. 
which is going to be kind of fun because the sashings that surround this block are background. So this block really comes alive in the quilt because it's got such a little tiny bit of background. So you've got all this focus fabric in one section there. So focus fabric is at the corners for and the center. So now to bag it up and go to the last block of this bag. Now we are up to C7 and there's a bunch of pieces left over and it's obviously for this block. Now there is no modification in the booklet but I do want to point one thing out. This right here is an overlap and this does not have, none of these have this little flat side. So if we put these in the corner we see that this is smaller. Okay. And I know, I'm thinking I know why. But we put all these in the corner like this. Okay. And have this bigger area. So then we take the squares, the only squares that are left that are any close to this, where there's one big giant square, but clearly that's the center. So we're going to take these guys and stick them in this corner. Even though they fit there, we're going to stick them because they when you assemble them, you have to stick them in the corner. Okay, because I'm testing a theory. Okay, so you stick them in the corner and then you take the bars here and they should fit between the squares. And oh, look at that. They fit between the squares. So it's fine that these triangles don't fit because the rest of the block has been adjusted to compensate for that. So see how this, if I can leave this, all right, see how this goes here, all right, this fills that whole space. So this probably should have been in the modified book, but it's okay. This is how we double check. All right, so we're going to put these here. The diamonds go on top of the bars, so that's not critical to the size at this point. All right, so you get the point. These fit because the bars fit, and then the square should be bigger also to fit to the bars. And sure enough, there you go. So the fact that these triangles are small on the outside is okay because the rest of the block is compensate for that. Now. For the tr diamonds, there's eight tiny diamonds, and then there's four bigger ones. And the four bigger ones get appliqued here, and the eight little tiny ones get appliqued here. All of the diamonds are going to be focus fabric. And then your other focus fabric piece is the center square. So all of these pieces here, this square, this diamond, and all these squares, and the outer triangles even, our background, the only one here right now that's focus fabric is the center fabric, or is the center piece. So the larger diamonds and the smaller diamonds are all going to be focus fabric. So I'm going to label all my pieces accordingly. So I've labeled all my pieces C7, and as I said, we're going to mark this focus fabric, and all of the diamonds are focus fabric because they get appliqued on after you assemble the base block. So these will go here, as indicated here, and these will go point to point on the bars. Let me bag this up, and this concludes the row C bag one bag sort.